Hi everyone and welcome to ClinSci Explained. Uh, my name is Ian and I am a clinical psychologist working in the UK. Uh, this video is all about how to become a clinical psychologist, so what um, experience and training you need to be qualified. If you've watched some of my other videos you know that I just flash up this disclaimer for a while for you to read just about the content of the videos really. I'll give you a bit of time to read over it and then once we're done with that we'll get on the video proper. Becoming a clinical psychologist is quite a long process and it starts really way back um, doing A-levels. Uh, most people think that you have to have a psychology A-level to actually go on to study psychology. That's not actually the case. What most universities are looking for um, to go on to do an undergraduate in psychology is good grades and possibly um, a bit of a background in science. Um, I personally did physics, maths and biology. so. Not really all that many connections with psychology apart from a small bit within my biology A level. So universities are looking for good grades to go on to study psychology. If you want to work in mental health settings um, as a therapist or another professional, you don't necessarily need to come from a psychology background. But if you want to call yourself a clinical psychologist, you have to have an undergraduate degree in psychology. So if you were doing your A-levels right now and you were thinking, I want to become a clinical psychologist, it's really important to check the British Psych Psychological Society website to make sure that the university that you're thinking of is on their list of accredited courses. And this is their way of quality checking because a lot of universities now offer psychology degrees. At the end of your three or four years, you'd be expected to have a high 2-1 or um, a first degree um, to, I suppose, to um, be able to progress onto a clinical psychology doctorate course. If your results are a little bit less than you're expecting, maybe a, a lower 2-1 or a 2-2, then you might have to go on to do an additional qualification, such as a master's at university, to show that you can meet the demands of the doctorate course. Unfortunately, after three years or four years of really hard work on your psychology undergraduate degree, you can't then just jump into the doctorate in clinical psychology. You have to go and find some experience. You have to go and get some experience and, and, and show that you are worthy of a place on the, the doctorate courses because the places are so limited and they're funded. Actually, when, when you're, you're doing your training, you're paid to be doing that training. So there's quite a lot invested in it and they want to make sure that they've got the right candidates. So it's all about getting experience. And in the past, this used to be always through assistant psychologist posts. And um, these have slowly been dying away over the last few years because maybe um, they're seen as an expensive resource. Um, and you see other people coming maybe from um, doing maybe work like um, support workers or um, high intensity IAPT workers, which is, stands for increasing access to psychological therapies, um, where they might deliver um, cognitive behavioral therapy for depression and anxiety to people. So it's all about getting experience. This can vary. Um, some people might need, only need a year's experience. Other people might be working for three or four years at this level um, to gain the right experience to then get onto um, the doctorate. Um, but it, it varies so much from person to person. Part of the reason it varies from person to person so much is because each of the courses has their idea of what the, the type of trainee they, they would like to have on their course. Um, and they all have core competencies that they work towards. And I'm just going to flash up now some general core competencies that are expected of clinical psychologists. And these tend to um, be around the themes of inclusivity, so making sure that the, the service that we provide is for everyone. Um, and things such as um, empathy and being able to be a therapist and, and be a caring therapist um, to the people that we might encounter through our work. So I'm just going to flash these up now so you can have a little look.
The sheer number of undergraduates who qualify with a psychology degree means that getting into clinical psychology is incredibly competitive and sometimes that might mean um, people have to take voluntary work or honorary contracts to get the relevant experience that they need. It might also mean um, getting jobs that are somewhat related um, to clinical psychology but um, people might not think that they're gaining the, the necessary skills like being a support worker but this shows some incredible skills that you can't actually teach people and it's showing that someone is caring and compassionate to the people that they work with. With all this experience, then people would apply for university courses offering the doctorate in clinical psychology. And there's only 30 of these um, throughout um, the UK. Um, and you apply through the Clearinghouse, which is um, a website that I'll, I'll flash up in a bit for you to look at. And as I said before, getting into clinical psychology is incredibly competitive. So despite having a good um, degree in psychology, despite um, um, having experience, only 15% of applicants get a place every year. Um, so there's a, a vast number um, who might need to kind of go away, maybe do some extra training, maybe get some other experience to try and gain that kind of place in the, in the clinical doctorate. You've done your undergraduate degree in psychology, you've got your experience, you've been fortunate enough to be one of the 15% um, given a place on a clinical doctorate course. Now the real work starts. Although each of the universities differ in how they provide their training over the three years, um, there are some commonalities between them. One of them is that by the end of the training you will have done four board placements. Um, and each of these are spending six months in an NHS setting generally, uh, working with clients in different areas. So you'd have a child placement, an older adult placement, an adult placement, and a learning disability placement. You've also maybe spent nine to 12 months in a specialist placement of your choosing, and that's to develop the skills that you think uh, will be necessary for your future career and development. You have also written up cases from these various placements and engaged in some sort of um, uh, assessment. For some courses um, that might be exams, for others um, that could be through essays, research and the, the, the big thing um, that means that you can um, hold a doctorate is doing um, a thesis and a thesis is a novel or unique piece of um, work or research that no one else has, has sort of looked at before and these tend to be quite um, epic pieces of work um, so upwards of 40 to 50,000 words. And that's pretty much it. That's how you become a clinical psychologist. In some of my other videos, I'm going to look at qualified life. So who would we work with? Where do we work? What are the types of things that we do day to day? Um, if you'd like to make a comment about this video, then please do so on the YouTube comment section. You can find me on Twitter at whatisclinsci, or you can send me an email and all the details will be at the end. So that's it for now and hopefully see you soon.